All right, at the top of the page, I asked you to recall what an axiom or postulate is uh, from day one. Those are our assumptions. We do not prove postulates or axioms, but we can use those within a proof. Again, so they're just basic assumptions. The first postulate we're going to look at is the ruler postulate. Okay, so when we use the ruler postulate, in this case we have points A and B on the number line to the right. And the distance, if I want to find distance, but distance I want you to also, let's circle here. Distance is also referred to as length. So when it says find the length of a segment, you're going to use the distance formula. With the ruler postulate, we're using this postulate for horizontal and vertical segments. And I realize for many problems within the coordinate plane, when you're finding the length of a horizontal and vertical segment, you can just count the squares. Okay, but when it comes to a proof, and we'll practice this today in justifying your answer, you do need to show the appropriate work, whether it's with the formula or whether it's with uh, using absolute value. Okay, so we define the distance between points A and B as the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates of A and B. Before I write it on the right side, I just want to highlight what AB without the line over the top is and what AB with the line over the top, what that refers to. We saw the second one last class. This refers to line segment AB. And just instead of writing it out in words, we write the letters with the segment over the top. When it has just the letters, the two capital letters without the line, that refers to the length of segment AB. So if you're really good with using the notation, I'm okay with you using the notation, but when you start to write your explanations and using notation instead of words and you're doing it incorrectly, I'll let you know, okay? I'm going to ask you to switch back so you don't lose the credit. So length AB here is defined as the absolute value of the difference between those two points. So I'm going to do the absolute value of 2 minus negative 4. Would that be the same if I subtracted in the opposite direction, so negative 4 minus 2. Does it matter the order in which we subtract? Since we're taking the absolute value of the difference, the order doesn't matter. So in this case, we get the absolute value of 6, because when you subtract a negative, it turns to positive. Or in this case on the right, the absolute value of negative 6, the absolute value of either is 6. So AB, the length of AB is 6 units. Below that, when three points are collinear, you can say that one point is between the other two. So if in a word problem, for instance, they say that, in our example, point B is between A and D, then you know they're all on the same line. So here, B is between A and D, where C is not. Segment addition. Okay, segment addition is really just, because we're going to look at angle addition, it's the sum of the parts is equal to the whole, which makes sense. So if we have um, B between A and C, I'm going to change this to a line segment. So here's point A, here's point C, and B is somewhere between those two. doesn't matter where you put it. So I'm going to put it here. It's saying that the length of AB, which goes from here to here, plus the length of B to C, which goes from here to the end point, that is equivalent to the whole going from A across to C. So again, it's the sum of the parts is equivalent to the whole, whether it be segment addition or next class we're going to do angle addition. So in this case here, again, this is finding the length of MP. It's saying that the length of MN is 17, the length of NP is 3Y, and then the whole length is 5Y plus 9. Before I can find what the whole length is numerically, I need to know what Y is so I can 
plug y in to find the length of the hole, whether I plug it in here or I plug it in here and then add the 17. So the equation 17 plus 3y is equal to 5y plus 9 allows us to find the value of y, then we'll go back and substitute. In geometry, some of you will like this, some of you will still need to show the inverse operations, but I don't require you to. So what that means is, if I'm solving for y, I'm going to subtract the 3y from itself on both sides. When I subtract it from the 5y, I get 2y. What do I get when I subtract 9 from 17? Yeah, 8, good. Divide by 2 and y is 4. So I'm okay without, you know, if you don't show me all the inverse operations. Some of you we still need to just to keep it all straight, but you don't have to. So now if I plug it in, 5 times 4 plus 9, 20 plus 9 is 29. So the length of MN is 29. You don't have to, but you should check. Up here, 3 times 4 is 12, and 17 plus 12 is 29. It checks. All right? Yes, this should be, rather than MN, it should be MP. Thank you. All right, line segments. Um, line segments, by definition, if they have the same length, so you measure them, they're the same length, I can say then that they are congruent. So with the segments here on the right, let's call this PQ, XY, I'm going to tell you right now they are congruent. So I've measured the length either with a compass or my ruler. The lengths are the same, therefore they are congruent. And I mark them with the same number of dashed lines. Okay? So again, I want you to note that lengths are equal. Segments are not equal. The lengths of segments are equal. Okay? It's important for your explanations. So I can say length PQ equals length xy. That's what it means when you don't write the segment over the top. When you refer to congruency, it's the segments themselves that are congruent. So segment PQ, again with a line over the top, is congruent to segment xy. And the symbol for congruency is this. So segment PQ is congruent to segment XY. And you'll see me when I write out explanations, instead of writing the word parallel, for instance, we've seen the parallel symbol, I'll use the symbol for perpendicular. I'll use the symbol for congruent rather than writing out the word congruent. Okay? So you'll see it uh, over and over again. On the back side, I want you to take a moment, and I'll do it up here on the board. I want you to plot segment JK, given the coordinates. It's a 6 by 6 grid. And then I want you to plot LM. Again, in this problem it says plot the points in the coordinate plane, then determine whether the two segments are congruent and justify your answer. I know you're essentially not proving something, but we need to justify or show the work, and you really can't show that you counted the squares. So we'll talk about different types of problems in which you can count the squares and which you can't, but since you have to back it up and justify, we're actually going to use the absolute value of the difference between the coordinates. And if you look at the coordinates of JK, you should be able to, before you graph, if you notice, the Y values are the same. If the Y values are the same, there's no change in the Y axis. It's not going up or down. It's staying exactly level. So that's going to be a horizontal segment. So I'm going to subtract 
the x value is 2 minus negative 3. For lm, I'm just going to write it out first, what stays the same here is your x coordinate. What's the same for LM is the X coordinate. So if there's no change in moving left to right, you then know it's a vertical segment. So I'm going to subtract negative 2 minus 3, the Y values, and I end up with the absolute value 5, which is 5, the absolute value of negative 5, which is 5. So since the lengths of JK and LM are equivalent or equal, bless you, the segments are congruent. So I'm going to write it in symbols. Again, because symbols is shorthand. So in symbols, this would look like since, again, the length of JK is equal to the length <coughs> of LM, segment JK is congruent to segment LM. We are going to derive it using the Pythagorean theorem. In our notes, we can abbreviate, so I'm going to abbreviate theorem, but for an assessment, we have to write it all out. It can't be P theorem, Pythag theorem, it's got to be Pythagorean theorem if we're using it in explanation. So leg squared plus leg squared is equivalent to the hypotenuse squared, that's your C. So Here's a uh, coordinate plane to the left. In order to use Pythagorean theorem, we need a right triangle. So I'm going to draw a right triangle. So first of all, I want you to take your ruler and connect the two. This is the segment we're going to find the length of. Now, rather than using the distance formula, you can use... Pythagorean theorem. In order to use Pythagorean theorem, you would have to find the length of both of your legs. So coming straight down. So here again is my right triangle. We're going to derive it. So I'm not going to look at those coordinates. I'm going to say, let's call this A. A has the coordinate x1, y1. I'll call this B. Well, because there was no change in the direction of up or down along the y-axis, this y value is going to stay the same. It's a horizontal line. What changes is the x. I'm going to call this x2, y1 because I'm moving along the x-axis. When I move up, what value doesn't change? The x, good. So this stays x2, so we'll call this c. And then this will be y2. So again, Pythagorean theorem is leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So this leg right here, ab, we just said it's a horizontal segment is the difference of their x coordinates. So the length of that side is the absolute value of x2 minus x1. The length of a vertical segment is the absolute value of the difference between the y values as the x's are staying exactly the same. So again, I'm still looking for that original segment which was here, AC. So AC squared is equal to the sum of the squares of your two legs. So this leg is x2 minus x1 plus my vertical leg, y2 minus y1. Again, keeping the square for A squared plus B squared. And now I'm actually going to solve for AC, okay? AC, again, is the length. I'm trying to find this segment right here. And to undo a power of 2, or square. What's the opposite of squaring something? Square root, good. So I'm going to take the square root 
here, it gets rid of that square. I take the square root there. Now because you're taking the square root of the sum of two squares, it doesn't cancel out those powers, okay? So I'm gonna write, but first of all, when you take the square root, you should realize that you do have two solutions, a positive and a negative. Again, in geometry, as I mentioned before, when you're finding the length of a segment, we will never have a negative measurement. So we reject the negative, and AC is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And that's your distance formula. So here, if x1, y1, and uh, b, x2, y2 are points in the coordinate plane, then your distance formula, it's noted as a d. We're going to write the same exact thing, but see if you can write it without looking up. So all I'm going to do is copy this down below. But without looking up, see if you can write it down and just noting, okay, the leg squared, horizontal, was x2 minus x1 squared. Vertical is the difference between the y values squared. And that's our distance formula. Hopefully, in driving it, it'll help you to remember it. Uh, it's a sestry multiple choice. We use the distance formula through proofs, our coordinate geometry proofs, and through other problems uh, throughout the year with some of our other polygons. So in going over it early and learning it early, we can continue to practice throughout the whole year. Okay? The other formula is midpoint. And I'm going to give you some time to see if you can derive the formula or come up with it on your own or with a partner. The midpoint, so by definition, the midpoint of a segment is directly in the middle because it's the point that divides the segment into two congruent segments. So I'm going to label it M. Again, you can mark it with one dashed line, then the other congruent segment with one, two and two, three and three, four and four, so on and so forth. Now, your segment bisector can be any, can also be the midpoint. Uh, it could be a ray, it could be a line. I'm going to draw a line on the left side. So my bisector here is CD. It intersects the segment at its midpoint. That's important for proofs. So with either a midpoint or segment bisector, with both, again, the length of AM is the same as the length of BM. And again, the segment AM is congruent to the segment BM. So why don't you take a minute and sketch a diagram for number three. And so within the picture, JK from here to here is seven. K was the midpoint, so you can say I have the lines to indicate congruency. And then the whole from J to L is four X minus two. I need a volunteer to tell me the length of K L. Jason? Seven. seven is correct. So if that's seven, what's all the way across? Fourteen. So KL is seven, JL is fourteen. Just again, the sum of the parts is equal to the whole. Now in order to find X though, if this whole is fourteen, I set these two expressions, one algebraic, one numeric, equal, and again, I'm going to solve for x. Add the 2 over, we get 16. Divide by 4, x is 4. So on the back side, it says the coordinates of the midpoint of a segment are the averages of the x coordinates and the y coordinates of the endpoints. So it says a is x1, y1, b is x2, y2. Then our midpoint M, now the midpoint is a point which has an X value and a Y value. So make sure anytime on your spiral, on a homework, if you're giving me the coordinates of a point, you need parentheses. If not, I'll let you know that it's incorrect and you need to fix it. So it could just be as simple as putting parentheses. 
Uh, let's label our x and y axis. So again, if you bring it down onto the axes, this is your x1, this is the x2, and the same for the y1. Not that you need to write this down, but if you need to look at it on an axis, because your midpoint, that point right in the middle, how do I find out what this y value is going to be and what this x value is going to be? What are the coordinates of your midpoint? Go back to what it said in the de description or the definition. Give you a couple minutes with the partner and see if someone came up to the board to write it down. What did it say the midpoint was? The coordinates, going back to that first statement within the box, the coordinates of the midpoint of a segment are the averages. How do you find an average, an overall average? What do you do with the numbers? Add them up, divide by the number that you have. So in this case, I'm going to add this middle point right here for x. I'm going to, or I'm sorry, y. I'm going to add up the two y values and divide by two. I average them, the point's right in the middle. And then it's the same for this point, x1 plus x2 over 2. So it's the average. So we're actually going to move down to an, or example number 5 and come back and finish with the distance formula. So the two midpoint questions are 5 and 6. So I'm going to find the midpoint. Okay, so this one wants us to find the midpoint of CD. So what I do is, I know I need to average the x's, so I'll circle the x's, add them up, divide by 2, so negative 2 plus 4 over 2, and then the y's, the two numbers that aren't circled, average those, negative 1 plus 2 over 2. So the midpoint is 2 over 2, which is 1, and then 1 over 2, leave it as a half, and not as a decimal. Number six is different in that it says M is the midpoint of AB, A has the coordinates, but M has the coordinates. So what you're looking for are the coordinates of B, and B is an endpoint. So we have to use that formula. So a picture here is going to help when you have to find an endpoint. So here's B, A, M's in the middle. Now I'm not drawing it to scale, okay? Uh, meaning it may not be a horizontal line segment, but I'm going to just draw it that way to help me solve it. So A is 2, 2, M is 4, 3. What are the coordinates of B? What is the X? What is the Y? Well, the formula said that I got the x value of the midpoint by averaging the x values of the endpoints. So 4 equals x plus 2 over 2. The formula said I got the y value from averaging the y values of the endpoint. So 3 is equal to, I'm sorry, it's supposed to be a negative 3, is equal to y plus 2 over 2. Cross multiply, you're done. Subtract 2, but do you want the easier way? Of course we do, right? The easier way is, again, the midpoint is equidistant from the endpoints. So if I go from 2 up to or over to 4 on the x-axis, we add 2. So 4 plus 2 is 6. Do you get 6 here when you cross multiply? Well, 4 times 2 is 8. Subtract 2 and x equals 6. Sure you do. Just a matter of which method you want to use. The next uh, y coordinate, we go from 2 down to a negative 3 on the y-axis, so I move down 5 or subtract 5. Subtract 5 and we get negative 8. Again, if you cross multiply, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And when you subtract the 2, you get negative 8. 
Remember to write, again, your answer as a point or a quarter. You have the x and y coordinates with your parentheses. To finish for today, we're going to go back up to example number four, which says to find length or distance? Length. Length, which means distance. So go ahead and, while I move up the screen, go ahead and write down your distance formula. Square root of your horizontal distance squared plus your vertical distance squared. And I just like to circle the x's so I know I'm focusing there because I'm going to do subtract those. 2 minus negative 2 squared, negative 2 minus 3 squared. So I substitute first. So I quickly plug it in and then I just do the math. Subtracting negative 2, 2 minus negative 2 is 4. 4 squared, negative 5 squared. We end up with 16 and 25, which is 41. Don't forget to bring your radical symbol down. Simplest radical form. So can you divide 41 by 4, 9, 16, 25? You cannot. So that is in simplest form. So simplest form, here's your answer.